Uh, so far we've talked about PI data, we've talked about relational database data. Now let's look at data that's coming from web services. Now there's a push now for distributed computing across the internet. Uh, allow applications to interoperate with each other, you know, across an environment that's secure but still works across the internet, uh, just requiring opening a port 80. Uh, web services is really the leading um, I guess the leading technology for implementing that kind of distributed computing. You're seeing a lot of application integration that's going on using web services as its mechanism, um, mostly because of the uh, robustness of the standard. It's an open standard. It's got a focus on communication. It allows a lot of applications to interoperate with each other. You're using a web service every time you're going to a site like uh, Amazon.com. And uh, in fact, have you ever been on a website where, oh, maybe you're a model railroad fanatic and you're on your model railroad website? All of a sudden you notice that on one of the pages it says, oh, by the way, if you want this book on model railroading, click here. You click there and it actually takes you through a, a an Amazon checkout. That's because Amazon's exposed their checkout mechanisms through web services. So that type of interoperability across the web, you know, having a somebody who runs a small little website for model railroads being able to leverage uh, the huge capability of Amazon to to you know ship and take money and all that uh, it's a, really uh, the wave of the future as far as interoperability of applications go so any of these applications that are using a web service they should work without any regard to where they reside, how they're implemented, etc., as long as they follow the standards set by the web service. So to give you an example, here's a web service. This is a web service site, webservicex.net. And the web service we're going to use today is called USA Weather Forecast. We're just going to get the, uh, the seven-day forecast for San Leandro, where our headquarters is. We need, in order to do this, we need something called a WSDL file. Uh, we need to know where this file is located on the internet and that's what we're going to make reference to. Once we've got that we'll be able to get the rest of what we need to implement this web service. And we're going to be doing this uh, from yes, from our um, our administration page. This is the web service data sources page. Now I got here again from going to yeah, we're on um, RT Baseline Services Administration, and I just went into this option here called Web Service Data Sources. This is where we're going to create our web service, or excuse me, create our data source for the web service. I'd like to go ahead and step through the configuration of a web service data source. So let's go ahead and uh, go off to our web uh, website here. A SharePoint website. Uh, I'm currently in the RT Baseline Services Administration. I'm going to go into the Web Service Data Sources. And as I said, the web service that I want, it was a uh, it's a web service that allows me to look at forecasts, weather forecasts. I'm going to call this web service something like My Weather. Now I need to supply a URL for that WSDL file. Now I can find that by going out to that website. And here's the website I was looking at before, the US Weather Forecast on Web Services on Web Service X. I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'll go back here and I'll paste that in as the WSDL file. Now if we've copied that properly, you should notice when you choose Get Services, it goes across the internet and interrogates the web server, checks to see if there are any services available uh, from that WSDL file, and if it are, if there are, it drops them into this uh, list right here. So there is something called Weather Forecast. It has the following methods. If I go ahead and choose Get Methods, there we go. It's got a method called Get Weather by Zip Code. That's exactly what I want. Now it's actually going to return much more than what I need. So later when we configure this into a, an RT table web part, for example, we'll just restrict this to the to the columns that we need. So I'll go ahead and save this. And this has now created a data source called My Weather. Now again, we're only about halfway done. What we still need to do is to go into this data sets section 
and create a data set based on that web service. We simply need to, you know, we need to pass it an argument of which zip code to retrieve, and that's done through this data set. We'll do that in a later example. So as I mentioned before, we're only halfway done. Uh, once we've configured that web service data source, we now have to configure a data set, just like we did with the relational database. So uh, now the data set is simply going to be defined by how the web service exposes its um, its data. So you'll notice that there are some configuration options in a web service data set that uh, that are really tied to whatever that web service method is. So um, using the uh, using the web service definition, when we go to that data set and we look for the method, it's it's going to populate that choice of methods from um, by interrogating the web server. And also there are different types that we can, uh, of parameters that we can make use of. Uh, you'll notice with the web service we can retrieve and, uh, excuse me, we can pass as parameters uh, text. Uh, we can also pass start times, end times, and also a resolve tag, which would be a pi tag. Now in the case of this example right now, the weather forecast, we're simply going to pass a, a zip code, so we're going to be passing a text type. So let's take a look at how we would do this. I'll go back to, again, my favorite workspace here. I'll add a new web part, and we'll add another RT table web part. That's a good one to use when you're making use of relational database or web service type data, because you'll notice it. Uh, it's looking specifically for a data sets. So I've configured excuse me, I have not yet configured a data set, so one of the things I'll have to do is specify a data set for this uh, particular web part. So to do that, I'll go back to my RT Baseline Services Administration, and again, the service I'm going to use, the web service I'm going to use, the data source, is going to be the one I configured in the previous example. That was the one called My Weather. I probably should have done this before I try, uh, before I added that web part. So here it is. This is the data source, and I need to create a data set that exploits that data so data source. It's going to this web service here. So again, let me go back to my I can go back to my previous screen. Whoops. Let's go back to the, uh, actually I can just choose it from here. Let's go to the data sets section. We're going to choose web service. And we need to create a new one. And I'm going to call this my web D set for my web service data set. My web D set. That's a, this is a data set, not a source. And the data source that I'll use is the one we just looked at, my weather. Now once I've done this, I can choose get columns. It's going to go out and interrogate to see you know what uh, what things are available to display. As you can see here, there are um, there's a lot of things, latitude, longitude, etc. the actual weather. The parameters we can pass are, are right here with the zip code. And for my default value, I'll choose the zip code over at our San Leandro headquarters. And we can preview this. And if it works out, then we'll just go ahead and save this. And you can see that's a long list of data that we're going to retrieve from this. So how long this takes is really going to depend on what kind of traffic we're seeing at that web service site. And there it is. So we're seeing the um, seeing the data returned here. So that looks good. The preview worked. I'll go ahead and save this. And the big finish would be to go complete the work I started at the beginning of this exercise, which is to configure that table web part. Yeah, currently it says no data sets selected. I'll go ahead and choose to modify this. 
Notice you can do that without having to go into edit mode. There we go. And for a data set, I'll choose the one called, I called this my weather DS. Excuse me, that's wrong. I called it my web DS or D set, my web service data set. So we'll choose that. And then uh, from that list, you can see the connection's been made so we can see uh, what things that we want to what we want to display in here. So I can choose, uh, for example, what the uh, the maximum temperature is, minimum temperature, etc. And current status and forecast and things like that. So let's uh, let's put the place name up there. And we'll go ahead and say OK. Now, of course, you know, since this is SharePoint, uh, we can make use of web part connection. So if we have a different web part that sends zip codes, then of course we can see, you know, the different uh, the different details here. So I probably should have uh, added a date there as well as we're seeing the different uh, predictions here. Okay, so that's how we would make use of the web service data set.